What if I told you that the computer you're using right now can't understand anything more complex than on or off? And yet, every video, every application, and every game are built on this foundational concept. Forget thinking of the computer as a brain, as it's really just the most sophisticated set of light switches ever created. And in today's video, we're going to understand how they work. Let's get started. Let's start with the absolute basics. Imagine a simple light switch in your house. It has two states, on or off. That's it. No in between. And while for a computer, on means a tiny electrical current is flowing, and off means it isn't. We represent these two states with just two numbers, one for on and zero for off. This isn't just a simple code, it's an entire number system called binary. Each one of these on or off signals, a single one or zero, is called a bit, short for binary digit. And when you group eight of these bits together, you get a byte. Every single piece of information your computer handles, a letter in an email, a color of a pixel, a note in a song, is broken down into these vast strings of ones and zeros. It's the only language the computer truly understands. But what are these switches made of? They're microscopic electronic components called transistors. These tiny semiconductors act like miniature gates controlling the flow of electricity. A modern computer chip like the one in your phone or laptop contains billions of these transistors, all flipping on and off at incredible speeds. It's an unfathomable army of tiny light switches working in unison. So we have billions of switches that are either on or off. And that's a great start, but how do we get them to do anything useful? This is where the magic of logic gates come in. Logic gates are small circuits built from just a few transistors that take one or more binary inputs and produce a single binary output. There are three fundamental types you need to know, the AND, OR, and NOT. First, we have the AND gate. Its rule is simple. The output is on only if all of its inputs are on. Imagine a secure door that requires two keys. You need key A and key B to open. If you only have one or none, the door stays shut. Next, you have the OR gate. This one is a bit more forgiving. Its output is on if at least one of its inputs is on. Think of an emergency light that turns on if the power goes out or if someone manually flips a switch. Either condition is enough. And finally, the NOT gate. This is an inverter. Whatever input it gets, it gives the opposite. So if you feed it a 1, you get a 0. If you feed it a 0, you get a 1. Simple, but crucial. These three gates, AND, OR, and NOT, are the fundamental building blocks. These simple logic gates can be combined in incredibly intricate ways to perform truly complex tasks. Now, for the really cool part. How do we get from these simple logical decisions to actual mathematics? How does a computer add two numbers? Let's think about how you learned addition. If you add one plus one in decimal, you get two. But in binary, one plus one equals one zero, not 10. It's the same idea as when you reach nine in decimal and then carry over the one to make one zero. Binary addition works the exact same way. We can build a circuit to do this. A simple circuit called a half adder is made from just two logic gates. It takes two single bits as input and gives us two outputs. The sum of the bits and any carry out to the next column. It's the simplest way to add two bits. But what if we're adding larger numbers and already have a carry-in from the previous column? For that, we will use a full adder. It takes three inputs, two bits to be added, and a carry-in bit, and produces a sum and a carry-out. By chaining multiple full adders together, one for each bit in a number, we can add any two binary numbers, no matter how long they are. This basic principle of using logic gates to add numbers is the foundation for all other arithmetic operations. So we've gone from simple on-off switches to logical decisions to performing basic math. Now let's tie it all together into the heart of your computer, the central processing unit or CPU. The CPU isn't just one adder. It's a massive, incredibly complex network of billions of transistors arranged in countless logic gates and adders, all working together in perfect harmony. It's the ultimate calculating machine when you launch an application, click a button, or play a game, your computer's software sends instructions to the CPU. These instructions, which you might write in a programming language, are translated into machine code. Those same strings of ones and zeros, the CPU takes these binary instructions and data, feeds them through its intricate circuits of logic gates, performs the necessary calculations, and spits out the results all in a fraction of a second. And how does it do all this so fast? Well, every CPU has what's called a clock speed. 
measured in gigahertz. If your CPU is 3.5 gigahertz, that means it's making 3.5 billion cycles or ticks per second. Each tick allows a new set of operations to be processed and synchronized perfectly. It's like an electrical ballet choreographed at an unimaginable pace. So the next time that you marvel at what your computer can do, remember the secret. It's not magic, it's the ingenious simplicity of combining billions of tiny on and off switches, following fundamental rules of logic to perform calculations at blistering speeds. It's a testament to human ingenuity, breaking down the complex into the most fundamental parts. So that's the fundamental logic behind every calculation your computer makes. If this explanation was helpful, let me know by leaving a like on the video and subscribing so you don't miss what's next. In the comment section below is the best place to leave your suggestions for future topics. So feel free to leave your ideas there. Thank you so much for watching and as always, keep growing.